Hey guys, hope you're all doing very well. It is the 19th of June today and I wanted to do this video update on Bitcoin today because I want to really focus on the lower time frame, but there's a very important update on the higher time frame also. Obviously, in the last video we spoke about on the higher time frame, the count of a one, two, three, four, five waves complete and now we're looking for a very large correction. Okay, there is one possible more bullish account than that that I want to consider and entertain in this video. We'll go into details on that, but largely it's just taking into consideration some of the fundamentals which I expressed within this tweet here only a few days ago where I spoke about crypto potentially behaving as a safe haven asset. So that's one thing we'll go into. And the reason I talk about safe haven assets is because looking at a lot of different markets, this is the 20 year treasury bonds. You can see it's absolutely collapsed. So there's not that many places that can be considered a safe place to leave your money. So it's a very important thing to discuss and consider from a fundamental point of view. And then also we want to look at the more current bit of price action also. So I want to look at this in particular with regards to the 200 week simple moving average, which is this black line here. You can see we put two weekly closes underneath the 200 week simple moving average. So we are seeing a bit of weakness. So what I really want to discuss in this video, are we starting to creep back above the 200 week simple moving average? Are we going to see this as a correction and then we make a new high? How high could that go? Or alternatively, are we just going to continue this downward trade and absolutely plummet to the downside? Okay, so these are all the things that we'll discuss into detail on today's video. All right, first things first, I want to discuss the two alternative counts. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, we've got that five wave move into here, which I went into detail in the last video. So if you want to hear a bit more about that and potential downside targets using that count, then check out the last video because I went into a lot of detail on that. Today's video, I want to put an update because there is the potential argument for a more bullish scenario. And that is, as I mentioned, the one, the, so the black count here, the one, the two, the three, the four would be a triangle. Probably better seen if we go on the daily time frame. If we just expand that a little bit. So the four would be an A, B, C, D, and E. So it actually starts here. And then you get a fifth wave, which starts with a one, two. And you can argue that's a one, two, three, four, five of the wave one of wave five. And then you've got an A, B, C finishing here to make the wave two of wave five. And then we're into the wave three, of which you can argue we've got wave one. And then we're seeing a wave two, which can certainly come down lower. So with either count, I do think we are likely to come down lower. But this is the alternative scenario. And the reason I put this count out there is because I think often when you're using technical analysis or Elliott Wave in particular, you will often have more than one count. It's very rare that you will get one very, very obvious count. There's usually multiple arguments for different counts. So I'm putting them out there. I'm not being completely absolute to that other count that I had. And the reason I'm entertaining this really is because of the fundamentals here. So I just want to go into those briefly and then we'll focus more on the technical. So I put this tweet out. Really, I was just thinking about the prospects of being a billionaire. Where can you actually stick your money when you've got a financial crisis? So obviously, assuming we're going to go into a recession and we see a stock market crash, where then is it safe for a billionaire to keep their money? Keeping into consideration the fact that banks are likely to default and obviously banks are only insured for only a certain amount of money which billionaires will very likely go far and beyond uh, so it leaves things like traditional assets so you've got like your bond market which as i mentioned in this picture here is absolutely collapsing for the first time in a very long time it took a very long time to get up to this peak back in 2021 and i although it's plummeted i've got it doesn't really show any real sign of recovery just yet Okay, so that's one traditional asset. Another one is gold. And that's what I spoke about in this tweet, how I do think gold certainly has a lot of potential, especially going into the end of this year. But the thing is with gold, we're at all time highs. Okay, so I've got this as a one, two, three, four, five. I do think we're going to have a strong year for gold, but potentially that could top out the end of this year. December 2023 it's a little bit hard to call it could drag on into next year but what happens when gold is overbought 
Okay, where is the money going to flood when gold is an overbought asset? I would have thought something that is a bit more oversold would be a much more attractive option, but you would want other fundamentals to support that oversold asset. Okay, and when you consider all of this, it does make you wonder about crypto and whether it could be that oversold asset that you might see money flooding into. So as I mentioned, bonds are in big trouble. Stocks, very likely to be in trouble. We're overdue a recession. Real estate, as we know, as we have quantitative tightening, inflation and interest rates going higher, that market is in big trouble and we're already starting to see that. Okay, so I don't even see that as an option. So then you've got the likes of perhaps fine art, which is always going to hold its value, no doubt. But has that got enough to, you know, mop up all the money that these billionaires have? Um, I don't think so. I think there needs to be another asset. So for now, you've got the argument of gold. But I think when that becomes overbought, you may just find people putting their money more and more into crypto. And the reason is, obviously, Crypto offers the fact that it is a hedge against inflation with its scarcity. It's a hedge against the financial system, the conventional financial system, which people may start to lose faith in with this inflation that's going on. And then it's a hedge against centralization, which, again, people might flock towards once they lose faith in their governments, which, again, could be linked to loss of faith in central banks. So lots and lots of things, lots of fundamentals that could point towards crypto potentially setting up nicely as people lose faith in the conventional markets and that could all tie in quite nicely with the halving for bitcoin which is timed at april 2024 so all this being considered we can now just discuss the technicals okay so i would say that this more bullish scenario would fit in with those fundamentals so that is the bullish way of looking at it okay so that, in my opinion, would still warrant another little bit of a downturn. I don't think it's due to go up just yet. But it may mean that we don't take out this low here at around 15 to 16k. All right. We may just be correcting this move up here. So we'll go into this in a bit more detail on the lower time frame shortly. But that's why I just want to entertain that possible one, two, three, fourth wave triangle. And then we're for the fifth wave, which could go on i've not plotted this with any accuracy just say it's way too premature to tell but we could be on for a one a two and then a three four five to follow of which we could have the one of three and we just need to correct that probably a bit more because the correction so far has been pretty shallow okay so that's just looking at it from the high time frame point of view now if we just pull up the bitstamp chart i want to go into this in a bit more detail about what we can expect short term with regards to this market so the wxy here was as if we're going to see this very big correction of a five wave termination that finished up here at 69k and then we're going to see a wxy to follow so that's one possible scenario certainly but there's just, there is that argument that we are in a simple one and two playing out which is a, a larger wave three of a terminal wave five of the whole a historic move within Bitcoin so with that said let's just now just take a look at what Bitcoin is doing now I did briefly mention the 200 week simple moving average in this point here so as I mentioned we've got this candle closed beneath this candle closed beneath the 200 week simple moving, moving average and the more time you spend beneath this very key high time frame bias indicator the more strong it is going to behave as a ceiling of resistance so we, it's very important to see how this week closes as you can see we're just creeping beneath it but when we look at this chart now we'll get a better idea as to whether we are going to get a weekly close above or beneath it because i do think that will be pretty crucial so first of all if this is a one two three four five impulse and we're going to correct that and push higher the correction is very likely to last longer than the, in, in terms of price and time it's very likely to go on longer in my opinion so i don't think we are gonna surge higher from here okay so that's my bias at present for a start how much have we retraced so from our low to our high we've not really respected the fibs so we've arguably we're respecting the 0.236 at this point here then we lost it and then you would expect at least a retracement to the 0.382 having lost the 0.236 but classically you would expect a retracement into the 0.618 and as you can see if we follow just this single pitchfork here 
This could take us all the way down into November of this year. And that is the point at which I was expecting gold to be overbought as an asset and no longer behaving as the most optimal safe haven asset. At that point, you might potentially see Bitcoin bottoming out and starting to push higher. Of course, what I'll be waiting for for confirmation is a break above this pitchfork to the upside. You'd probably by that point have tested the lower warning line, in which case you would want the upper warning line to be overcome to get a sense that we are now going back into that bullish market. And that is the main trigger that I'll be looking out for. Okay, so this is just a fib which in my opinion, we've not really come far down beneath so far to warrant another surge to the upside. Okay, so first of all, let's go on the daily and look at this bit of price action uh, in a bit more detail. Okay, so I want to just bring up a bigger pitchfork, which is this one. So this is the pitchfork that we were previously looking at and it was a really nice pitchfork. You can see how well the pitchfork lines were respected. So it's simply a, a steep gradient original pitchfork using our first, second and third pivots. Always important to use the log scale when using these pitchforks. And you can see very nicely the lines get respected again and again. And I mentioned my concern on YouTube and to my group that once we lost this median line, the likelihood of this pitchfork holding was really being questioned. And you can see we lost it here. This was the first early warning sign then we got this to follow corrected price act, price action to the upside and then we lost the lower median line acting as resistance and then eventually the lower warning line was lost and the reason i don't have didn't have the pitchfork on to begin with in this video is because it has been now lost the lower warning line here that was held for a good while has been broken so the pitchfork is no longer relevant okay that basically tells you that we've got to move from here to here that has been completed and we now are either going to break it completely to the downside taking out that low or we're going to see a correction of that move from here to here we're going to see a correction which you would expect to be proportional in terms of time and price and at present i don't really consider this correction to have kind of met that criteria for a correction that is proportional in terms of time and price yeah, I think it's been very shallow and I think it's been very short in duration and I think it's going to be longer lasting. So that is why that's kind of the reasoning behind my bias at present that we're going to see further downside. However, of course, every kind of a bias that you have needs to have its invalidation. And I would say that if we can break above this down sloping pitchforks upper median line here, this blue line sloping to the downside, if we can get back above that, then you could argue the downward trend is being invalidated and we could easily take out that high and if we take out that high we're going to head at least the next level of resistance which i've mentioned in the previous video in depth would likely be the bottom of this overhead resistance in and around 35 to 36k and there's some, another reason for that level based on our camera pivots which we're going to look at in just a moment so our camera pivots which is another very important indicator there's three main indicators that i like to use is it's elliott wave pitchforks, Camarilla pivots, and then there's others. Uh, of course, we've mentioned the moving averages. We've mentioned fibs. These are kind of like in the periphery with regards to my strategy. Uh, but the main the main aspects are the Elliott Wave and pitchforks. And then I like to throw in Camarilla pivots as a very important horizontal level to look for support and resistance. So yes, let's just take a quick look at the Camarilla pivots because there is some useful information. So let's see, we got this bounce here. One, because we hit the lower median line of this pitchfork. But you'll see when we bring up the camera pivots here on the daily time frame we've got a very nice bit of support off of the s4 right here and then on the four hourly also you'll see a very nice support again off the s4 okay so the lots and lots of confluence we had the four hourly s4 we had the daily s4 and then we had the lower median line of this down sloping pitchfork lots and lots of confluence right there and then we had that very nice surge to the upside but as i mentioned i've got a feeling that we have still got further downside to come um so i'm not getting overconfident but you can argue there's a little bit of a optimism warranted because we're above this down sloping median line here of this smaller pitchfork okay so we're just clinging on to that but i've got a feeling we might even come up to this upper median line but i'd still think that we're gonna my bias still favors a move to the downside even if it does come as high as that upper median line into around 27 and a half k 
for the reasons I've mentioned. However, if we can get firmly above that, as I say, there's that potential move onto 35K. And the reason 35K was significant is if we look at the weekly Camarilla pivots, again, I go into these Camarilla pivots in detail in the last video, but it's the R4 on the weekly time frame that I would expect to offer some firm resistance. Again, as you can see, it's around 35K. So potential opportunity for a run into that point there. As you can see, you can argue the R3 is offering a bit of support here after it recently acted as resistance back here. So yeah, these are all the things that I'm looking at. Uh, so summarizing, short term, I expect that we are gonna continue following this downtrending pitch to the downside at present. The invalidation for that would be uh, us getting above this upper median line. If we are to continue down within this pitchfork, I would be favoring a move that could, as I say, go on as as long as like October, November of this year, looking at typically a 0.618 retracement of the move from the low to the high, okay? Then we would have to look at various things. So if we start to see strength coming in, so getting back above these lines within the pitchfork, breaking it out, we can then start talking about the more bullish scenario that we spoke about at the beginning of the video in terms of the higher time frame. However, if we fail to do so, fail to find support, we just keep rolling over, then I would be favoring the more bearish scenario, which obviously, as I mentioned, had some very quite extreme downside targets, talking about going down as far as 6 or 7K. Okay, So I've not written either scenario off the cards just yet. I want to throw out all the kind of bits of information that I'm considering right now, all the kind of tools that I'm using to try and differentiate which count to lean towards. So these are all the things that I'm considering. Now, if we go in on the, uh, let's take off the camera pivot. So four hourly, as, it's, as you can see, this is a strong move up. It is looking like a bit of a pause, getting ready for a next leg up, I have to admit. As I say, I'm happy for a move up to 27.5K and I'd still hold on to that bearish bias. I think that is the point you'd need to overcome to kind of claim any more um, bullish sentiment. So those are the key things to look out for. So I will be trying to do more regular updates on Bitcoin, most likely on a Monday. However, next Monday, I will be away from my computer, unfortunately. But from then onwards, I'm hoping to do consistent videos on a weekly basis. So hopefully this will be of use to you. Uh, do leave a like if you have found value in today's video. And until the next video, hope you all take care. Thank you for your attention in watching through to the end of this video. Now I know there's a lot of you watching that would like to learn how to confidently trade the financial markets independently and I also know how confusing this can be regardless of how many stressful hours that you put in. For that reason I've put together all of my trading knowledge in a complete course titled The Works. The Works consists of thorough and jargon free lessons broken down into a comprehensive curriculum providing you with a holistic understanding of the markets and giving you an accelerated journey to being able to analyze and trade the markets all by yourself. And for those of you that are looking for my weekly detailed video analysis on crypto and stocks, then there's Cryptology, which is a subscription that will also give you access to the works while subscribed. For more information on what's included in the works or Cryptology, you can head on over to wave618.com or alternatively use the links in the description to this video for a limited time 50% discount offer. So I hope to see you on the other side, but in the meantime, if you would like to sample some of my educational videos, then you can check out these videos that you can see on your screen right now. Thanks once again, and until next time, take care.